Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Land Place. Slay the Spire. Uh, it's the first, look at the, it's March 2nd. Look at that. Where's the backlog gone? Well, it was very slowly wicked away over the course of a month and a half, anyway. I've been, like, very negative on Slay the Spire recently. Not the game, necessarily, but my own performance in it, and, uh, you know, the videos haven't been that successful. People have been like, hey, you kind of stink at the game, and I'm like, yeah, I know, I, and I feel bad about it, and I was kind of like, maybe I should just stop playing it, but I like it. I like it a lot, and I want to get better, but I'm going to remove some of the pressure from myself. I'm going to try to follow the piece of advice that people have given me the most, and be an adult about it and play more slowly instead of playing super quickly and making sure that we inevitably are going to make mistakes. We're still going to make mistakes, but at least we can minimize mistakes that are preventable and only make this mistakes that are excusable as opposed to, you know, making mistakes that are just due to rushing. By the way, there's also dailies in the game now, which is what I'm going to play for a little while here. Wow, the dailies reset at, I think, Greenwich Mean Time. The top score is 382? That seems terrible. Wait, the seven, 16th best score is zero? <laughs> this doesn't seem right. This game has sold, like, dozens of thousands of copies. I know it's a weird way to explain it, but, like... this I, I refuse to believe that these leaderboards are working properly. And, like, what, this score is okay, but, like... I refuse to believe only 17 people have played it. Is this like in my weight class or something like that? Diverse. Start with two cards from another class. Uncertain future. The map only shows question marks. Binary. Card rewards only contain two cards. And the merchant's prices are increased by 25%. What the heck, man? Time for a challenge. Oh, thank God. We start with two bouncing flasks, which is kind of cool. New music, too. Uh... <laughs> Guess we'll start here, if you don't mind. All right. Well, turn one, bouncing flask, strike. Now that I'm playing, this is a, a, literally the first run of Slay the Spire that I have done in like two weeks, because I, I had the backlog, I was away, and even when I came back, I had enough content to not have to play the game for a while and play other things that were a little bit more pressing so it feels good to be back i think that with more distance to the game i got a little bit more despondent about it and i was like people are being mean to me even if it's partly also my own fault now that i'm back i'm like i'm the let's have a good time together let's be entertained are you not entertained maybe dailies are just what we need all right out of these i love clash but Clash is a, uh, it's an attack, and Bouncing Flask is a skill. I still think Clash is the right opportunity for us to go with here, so let's continue moving on. Uh, does this go all the way, by the way? Like, I'm assuming we fight this guy and then we move on to a second floor. Otherwise, a score of 300 would, like, actually make sense. Uh, so this time, I'm gonna defend, and I'm gonna defend, and then I'm gonna strike. Why do two defends? My opinion right now is, I'd rather take one damage than take, uh... Six damage, and this gives us the ability to hit him harder on a turn in which he's buffing, and that's what we're gonna do right now. Honestly, like, th there's a good thing and a bad thing about Bouncing Flask on uh, the Ironclad. The good thing is that it's so much more damage than anything else we can get uh, in our default deck, at the very least. The bad thing is uh, we're never gonna get other poison synergies because we're the silent, right? So, um... So you, you're gonna hit me for 10. I have no blocks, so it really comes down to whether we're gonna bash and then strike, which is a bad turn, but that's all we can do if we bash because of the energy. Or if we bouncing flask, it'll take you to 17 poison. Strike, clash, which I think actually will kill you before you hit me. I'm trying to get into the habit of doing the math more frequently as well. And there you go. So that worked out very well. Thankfully, Ancient Potion, Battle Trance, Body Slam, Battle Trance I think is worth taking. The question marks are a real bummer, we're never going to know like where we stand there. You're going to do 12 damage on turn 1, I do not like this. We could defend, defend, and then we only take 2 damage. And then this guy's definitely, well almost certainly dead on the next turn. We definitely do want a bouncing flask on the acid slime, though. What are you? What's your corrosive spit? It's a wound. Not a big deal, yet. Um, okay, so be struck. 
We're gonna draw? We were kind of hoping for a bouncing flask, to be honest with you. And now we should run the math again. We could bash you, it'll take you to 24 with vulnerability. Or we could defend, defend, and then we'll take you to 16. And I think that, or we defend, defend, clash, I mean. I think that's better. Just because of the raw damage output, and it's fairly reasonable that we can get to 16 damage on the next turn. Maybe? Now that I think about it, it's actually not that reasonable. <laughs> like, Bouncing Flask Strike will not take you there. So we're going to defend, defend, strike. We're just going to play it a little more slowly here. The less damage that we take, the better, because we never know there could be an elite lurking right around the corner. All right, that went fine, all things considered. And out of these... I, none of these really fit our current deck archetype, although I do recognize we will need some more defensive options at some point in the future. So, out of these, what do we like? We could remove, we could metallicize. I actually think metallicize is kind of overrated, but again, we've established many times, I don't know what I'm talking about. Pummel, which gets a, a bonus from strength, is nice, but we don't have any strength gain cards. I think we might want to shrug it off. Remember, things are very expensive now. We, we either like shrug it off or we remove maybe a basic strike or we maybe consider removing the poison but the poison has been pretty good so far um, although it'll get worse as the deck gets larger I think I'm just gonna go for a shrug it off and I'm not gonna take pummel although eight damage the thing is when you play it it's exhausted so right now it's just like a slightly better strike but if we ever get strength which we probably will because we're playing as the ironclad it could get way better okay here you go 50 gold remove a card and I do want you to pull... It. So the thing is, it's probably best to remove these so we can build a, a more consistent archetype, but it's not as fun. In my opinion. Alright, uh, we will upgrade a card. Now, do you upgrade a Bouncing Flask to make it better? Do you upgrade a Clash? You can still upgrade. It does 18 damage instead. I can upgrade... Look, if we're gonna adhere to the meme deck... Let's really adhere to the meme deck. Sure, find some potions. Regen, I think, is actually kind of overrated. I think a strength potion is more valuable, and I kind of like... I kind of like all these, actually. I'm content with where we're at. We'll upgrade another card. I think we're getting pretty lucky, although we're not getting many rewards in the interim period. So now we're dealing 12 poison damage for 2 energy. Well, 12 poison damage on turn 1, then 11, then... 10, etc. I mean, you can do the math at that point, I think. <laughs> oh, Gremlin Horn? People say I overrate this, but for the time being, I'm pretty pleased with it. And, oh my god, please lord. Inflame is good. No question. But I, I do kind of want to just remove. Although, if we remove another card, we're probably making Clash worse. I think I might just skip this shop and save our money. Please, no more shops. I want an elite. Be careful what you wish for, but... Honestly, I think I should do that to start with. I don't think that's bad. And you know what? Hit me for one. So you need 14 to be killed, and you need uh, 16 to be killed. But we could also just stall for another turn. Like, if I shrug it off and defend, we'll take two damage. And then we can strike and just put this guy a little closer to death. See what we get off shrug it off? Oh, we can't draw again. That's right. Yeah, I like this. We'd like these two guys to die simultaneously if possible so we don't get actually affected by vulnerable. But now you're dead in one strike and you're dead in ten damage, which... Uh, there's a variety of ways to get there, but we're going to be fine here. Th See, that's a good example of why you should do the math. But he's dead anyway, but that was not very smart. <laughs> and don't forget about Gremlin Horn. That's right, yeah, Gremlin Horn. It's a good card. Hey, sorry about this, buddy. Would you mind taking 15 poison damage on turn one? The dailies are reinvigorating me with these modifiers. Uh, none of these really seem to fit that well. I mean, admittedly, Iron Wave is basically 
it's close to being a strictly better strike, and it is a strictly better block. So I guess I'll, I'll throw that in there. It's not as glamorous, but it still might be good. Okay, so this is someone that we're very eager to fight here. I think I'm gonna pop a Strength Potion. And the idea is we just... Usually, we want to race this guy. So the faster we can get him killed, the happier we're going to be. Now, we don't want to defend much. Now, this will make him stronger, but I think it's still worth doing because of the fact that it applies 12 poison damage on turn 1, and then, of course, it just gets better from that point onwards. And then Iron Wave is our best attack because it also gives us 5 blocks. So we're going to take 11. This guy very likely is dying on the next turn. Bash strike gets him. I mean, Bash just kills him, but we might as well just let him die this way. Um, that, that went pretty well. If we can get a good relic, dude, I think we're off to the races. That's not a good relic, I think. 10% more likely to find treasure in question mark rooms. Armaments combust. I do, you know, I, I get a caricature. People go, oh, he always takes armaments, but it's, it's good, though. It's a good card. And I think we could do with some more defense in this deck. We obviously want to upgrade it as soon as possible. Regal Pillow is good when we rest, which we have not done much. Because we haven't had to, thankfully. And you... You're a problem. Let's start with Battle Trance. We can play Clash. So I think Bouncing Flask, Defend... Clash is our best option here. And I think I'm actually going to apply a weak potion as well. You're only dealing 9 damage now, which means we're only taking 4. Also, I'm dumb, and I just realized uh, we can't actually defend Clash because we have 2 defense. But this is still an okay turn, because he's going to be at 34, which is actually effectively 23. Now, in all likelihood, we're not going to do 23 damage to him next turn. I honestly think this turn you just hit him hard. Actually, we should have used Strike there instead of uh, Iron Wave. I'm falling into bad habits. But now he is dead anyway, but um, why use Strike? Well, it's an extra damage. And we didn't need the block from uh, Iron Wave, so that was kind of overkill, but... Sweet. Everything's going okay for now. I don't like... I like Warcry Plus. And we'll obviously upgrade armaments, but I like Warcry Plus. I don't really like Warcry by default, but it, maybe it could fit in an exhaust archetype. So Floor 1 has gone exceptionally well here. Much, much, much better than I would have anticipated. If we're going to heal to max at the end of the floor, do we really mind if he hits us for 9? He also re uh, reduces our card draw. So let's drink the Ancient Potion to stop that. I do think we want to Bouncing Flask. After that point, I'll Battle Trance, but I know that you're going to be like, Order! But... I mean, you're right. <laughs> I honestly think you just strike him and let him hit you for 9. Uh, because we want to get his HP low quickly, so that we can cause him to split with the least amount of HP possible. We don't really want to play this guy slow. So this is an Armaments, uh, Defend, Defend, Clash. That's our most damage output there. We'd like to get one more, and we are going to get it on this turn. We want a Bouncing Flask. And we're really, uh, we're, we're going to let him hit us for 35, because I'm assuming we heal to full after this anyway. But if we put 12 on him, he's going to take 22 damage. He's going to go down to 71 HP, which is exactly where we want him to be. And again, that's order, except for the fact that Bouncing Flask was already upgraded and can't be upgraded again. So yeah, we, we get hurt really badly, but this dude is going to split into enemies that do, like, no damage. So I think you almost certainly Bouncing Flask, even though the poison is going to dissipate once, you, once he splits, that's still t a 12 damage attack. And then that allows us to do Clash for 18 damage, and then we'll hit him for another 9, and then we'll hit him for another 18. He's going to split into two enemies that have 11 HP each. That's just horrendous. For him, it's amazing for me. One strike causes them to split, so we're never going to take damage from them. Unless we choose to. Uh, 
So we'll definitely just split that guy, like, immediately. And then we... I think you just bash him to death, probably, right? Like... There's no reason, really, to play anything else here. Why let him live? This looked like it went badly because of the fact that we... Uh, took so much damage in that one situation, but this is fine. This is, like, actually completely fine. We might as well just... You know, Bouncing Flask just kills him. So does Strike Iron Wave, but... Good first floor. We got a deck. We got an interesting sort of situation here. You gotta go Reaper. It's just... I mean, Impervious, sure. If we could store the block in some way, but... Reaper fits the deck a little bit better, I think, even though we have no strength gain. So, uh, we definitely do not want Velvet Choker. Cursed Key is interesting, except I think it's a little worse on this daily, if you'll hear me out. Because we, we're not going to know where to go to remove cards. So I'm thinking Question Card, but 4 energy when we've got some Bouncing Flasks in our deck... And Reaper now seems good, so sure. Uh, and we get the advantage of four energy before we open a chest. So we get four energy for free until we open our first chest. And then we'll just try to make sure we can remove cards at some point in the future. And I'm kind of just choosing willy-nilly here, but at the same time, like, I don't know <laughs> where... I don't know where the enemies are going to be, so you know what I mean? Like, this is... Uh, I think... It's a good time to use Explosive Potion, except that it doesn't break them. So I think we gotta do, like, start here. Oh, we have four energy. We don't really want to use Reaper here. Um, we'll, we'll just throw in a Defend instead, but yeah, four energy. That's good. We might have done things differently than and used Bash to start with, which is another good example for why we should play things slowly. Either way, we took no damage as a result of this. And one of them is wounded, but obviously we want to go a little further. Start with an Armaments here. I mean, this, this just plays itself, so. We've got enough block. I think we should wound this guy. Or maybe we could just kill that guy. Nah, it's not as good. I can't stress enough how incredible for me it would be to win the first daily we ever did. I know it's not Ascension mode, even though we got cool modifiers. These modifiers, I know I've only played one game. But it's like the best thing they've ever added to this game. We're only taking four damage on this turn. I might allow that to happen just to be able to use two Bouncing Flasks. One way or the other, we probably wanted to use one Bouncing Flask. And then I'm thinking like Explosive Potion. This guy's dead. They do take full damage from the explosive. They also take full damage from the poison. So yeah, let's, let's throw that other bouncing flask out there. Oh, perfect. That's okay. I, I wish that it had gone slightly differently, but that's okay. We probably should have struck this guy so we got Gremlin Horn advantage instead, but at least we get the card draw here. Alright, well, I mean, everything's going fine, right? Like, I, I think with four energy, I probably just armaments... No, I think I Strike Strike Reaper, just to block you from doing anything. It might kill you anyway, but... Yeah, this this way you get blocked, which is important, both on Twitter and in Slay the Spire, uh, in order to not take any damage to your Psyche or to your HP. So there you go. I gotta be real with you. I like Cleave. I'm not going to take Cleave all the time like I used to, but I do like Cleave. Oh, it's a strictly better strike. Just because it's memeable doesn't mean it's not amenable. See? Catchy, catchy expression. So, I think that we should shrug it off before we use Armaments Plus in this situation. Because we don't really want to gain 11 block this turn. We'd rather see if maybe we can upgrade a card that's useful to us immediately. And it did not work that way, but that's life, dude. You start putting hexes on us, and our deck is not particularly fat, so I'm not thrilled about it. 18 damage is highly no joke, but I'm gonna hurt you pretty badly. We gotta hit you with the bounce. This turn, it plays itself, really. It's a bouncing flask, followed by a bash. 
We could do Strike Strike instead, but Bash is actually better for the status effect and it allows Clash to do more damage than the extra damage we get from using two strikes instead of a Bash. You're at 52, which is actually 40. I'm thinking next turn with a Fire Potion, I might just be able to kill you. Like, really, you're not at 40, you're at 29. So if we can Reaper Strike Fire Potion, which we did not get... Um, let me run the math real quick. So you're at 29 HP. This this will kill you with the Fire Potion, and I'd, I'd rather... Well, now that I think about it... You're definitely dead. Let's defend instead, even though it gives us extra Hexes. And the idea is, if we draw a Reaper next turn, we can at least heal for 4. Which is not a lot, but it's something, right? Yeah, so we might as well do that. And we got four extra heal out of it. We're not getting anything else, like... Nothing else of value really exists here, but... That was a, an okay play in the whole scheme of things. And we're gonna be at 72 HP. I don't think we need this much of our deck to be Armaments Plus. And we're not exhausting basically any card. Alright, Sneko, we got a lot of 2 HP cards, or 2 damage cards, two, 2 energy cards, one day I'll get it right, so this doesn't seem that bad. Uh, I think you look at turn 1 and you go, I mean you could Bouncing Flask defend Clash, it's 14 damage, I think I'd rather do the Bash, which would just be Bouncing Flask Bash, the defend is already worthless, so... It, no matter what, you're definitely applying poison first. Then the question becomes, what's better? 14 damage, or 8 damage plus what essentially amounts to one vulnerable. Are we going to get 6 damage out of a vulnerability on our next turn? I'd say the answer is probably, so... That should make up the difference between the two cards. That's my expectation at the present moment, at least. Okay, you're doing 8 damage, which is not much. We'll start with an, uh, Shrug It Off. Throw in a little Battle Trance. Uh, we already have 8 block. So I think we love a Bouncing Flask. And then probably just a Strike. Which is better than the Iron Wave because we don't need any extra block. So this still applies another 12 damage. And then we take you to 88. So actually you're going to be at 65, which is actually 43. We're not going to do 43 damage to you on this turn. We're not going to do 23 damage to you on this turn. So we're, we're going we're gonna to take quite a hit here. Hit you with the weak potion. 16. 5-5. Five, five. Alright, I'm going to let you hit me for 6. Now I need to do 22 damage to you, which seems... Plausible. Many ways to get there. Start with the card draw. Oh, God, but the bash kind of sucks, right? I need to do 22 damage to you. Ugh. I don't love it. It's a, it's a pretty heavy use of our potions. But the potions are there to be used. Probably. Yeah, I'll take another clash. Our deck seems defensively kind of okay right now. So a little bit more offensive punch is fine by me. This guy usually has to go first, unfortunately. Uh, you know, you hear me out here? That's fine. We actually got through some cards we probably don't want to play immediately, so... I'm gonna start with two of these bad boys. It's just, I think it's our best damage output, and it puts... Wow! Wow! Though That was not likely. But it puts that guy on one heck of a timer, doesn't it? Plus, we played two skills before we found ourselves being hexable, which I think is important. But I think we're going to take some serious hits on this fight, if I'm being real with you. Now, uh, you might not love this, and you would be right, I think. But I don't want to play defense, because it's going to hex us up. I think instead... Well, you know what? Let's be... Let's not succumb to bad habits. Let's do the math. We defend, defend, we get two hexes. We go to 21 cards. Then we get a bash for eight... And a Clash for 21. That's 29 damage to this guy. We take 6. No, we take 0. That's right. The other alternative would be a Bash and then a Cleave. 
we would do 15, we do 23 damage to this guy and he'd be on 30. And we deal 10 damage to you, you'd be on 64, which would take you there. You know what? I think while you've got the opportunity, we should treat him like this. And then maybe we can kill this guy next turn. And then this guy is just kind of, you know, he, he's on a clock to begin with because of the fact that he's got 22 poison stacks on him. We are weakened, and that sucks. But now this turn, we, we only have Strike Strike. Well, Strike Strike Defend. We can't play Clash, so... Mercifully, the game gave us a turn that was very easy for us to figure out. I think it's unlikely we'll deal 12 damage to this guy and 8 damage to this guy, so we'll probably end up getting hit by him or him, but... We will throw in an Armaments here. And that allows us to at least lethal this guy. Oh, we get a Gremlin Horn, which Bouncing Flasks and saves us. That's the ideal top deck in that situation, because it's not affected by our weakness stacks. Good stuff, dude. That worked out just fine. Swift Potion. Honestly, I think we can afford a clothesline. We can afford an offensive or a, a, an expensive attack. You are annoying, so I want to get as many uh, stacks of poison on you as possible. We can totally play Clash. We can play two Clashes on turn one. So I think we're going to accept that you're probably going to do six times two. And I'm going to go on you first, because you're going to be a little easier to deal with once one of these enemies is gone. So, uh, probably we're thinking Clash, Clash, Clothesline, Strike, Iron Wave. 28, 42. I can kill you. So maybe it's better to weaken you, but no, I don't think so. Because it won't do any damage through the... Yeah, I think it's better to take 13 damage off than to weaken this guy and take, like, 8 damage off. Plus, this guy's dead forever. So it would be Clash. Clash. Clothesline plus. Iron Wave. I hate that I have to use both attacks on you. Strike. Gremlin Horn came through in the clutch. I forgot about that. We might as well not even strike. It doesn't matter. So we're going to take 6. No, we're going to take uh, 7. But now... So I don't love this. We have to poison you. So we'll start with armaments. And then we'll bouncing flask and then we'll defend. So we actually are going to take no damage and you're going to have poison stacked on you now. Dude, we're we're doing okay. This daily is right now going just fine. Are we back? Is this like a slay the spire renaissance perhaps? Let's not get too cocky. Start with some block. And honestly, I'm kind of like we sh we should just block block. And then it doesn't really matter what we do with our remaining cards. We can Swift Potion, but it's unnecessary. I think you just let him continue to get chewed up by the poison. And you did frail us, so that's going to be actually pretty difficult to get around. But uh... Now we need to do some math. I think... So, Bouncing Flask once takes him to 22. Hello. Love you too. Take Will do. Takes him to 22. And then a defend. Takes 6 damage. Like, I'm, I'm debating two bouncing flasks. The real question, it all comes down to a very simple linchpin, I think. Can we... Kill him next turn with one bouncing flask, which allows us to play this defend. He'll be at... 22 poison, which will take him down to 23 HP. We would need to be able to punch through 1 HP next turn, which I think we can probably do. It's not guaranteed, because we are going to be uh, punching through 14 block, but... And again, we have strike left over, but there's nothing to do with it, so... Okay, we need to punch through 2 damage, but still. I think that was the right play. We can get through it, absolutely. He's dead. We heal. Look at that. We made it out. Just fine. Feel no pain. Now nah, So we don't have strength gain, so Sword Boomerang is not that good. But then, whenever a card is exhausted, gain 6 block. We're not really doing exhausts. Not yet, anyway. 75 gold, remove a card? Absolutely. I know it's the Cleric. You don't need to tell me it's the Cleric. I'm aware it's the Cleric. We're going to dump more strikes. Clash is still usually... 
It's oftentimes being enabled, so I'm not feeling too bad about it. You, I hate you. I think this is a... Do we want to weaken you? You are annoying. It's either a weaken or a vulnerable for certain. Because I think we want to defend. I think I'd rather vulnerable. No, I'd rather weaken. So we'll defend, clothesline, clash. It's three turns of weakness versus two turns of vulnerable. Oh, I didn't even realize we'd have energy left over for cleave, because I, I apparently failed third grade math. So here we are, enfeebling spores, no good. We're both weak, though. Well, we can play it kind of defensively. We don't have much offensive potential, so seems okay. I think I want a Bouncing Flask. And then play our Block Potion. And probably do like, I don't know, Iron Wave. The idea is, I want the Poison on him. Because it's going to make him so much easier to kill through his armor. We'll take no damage, which will allow us to heal up to max if everything goes right. Then it's either an Armaments to upgrade everything. Because the block is unnecessary. Or an Iron Wave to do 3 extra damage. Well, that'll take him to 43, which will take him to 31, which will actually take him to 20. I think it's conceivable we could deal 20 damage. So I'm going to try it this way. But admittedly, it's not a lot of damage. So we need to do 20 through armor here, which uh, actually... Well, let's see, it'll take him to 23, then we need to do 9 through armor. 8 through armor. I think we need to take our other potion. I'm like, armaments defend clash. I think it'll work. Oh, but then we, we need battle trance as well. It needed to not give us a skill, but either way, the skill is going to be enough to kill him, so I think we got pretty lucky there. Sure, we used a lot of potions, but it's all going to be worth it in the end. Because we're going to be back at full HP, hopefully. Hopefully it's worth it, is what I mean. It's kind of tempting to have some more top-end damage, but if we don't play it, it's gone forever. And honestly, the, the deck has been working so far, so it's kind of like, I, I don't really want to just say no to it. I think we'll upgrade Reaper real quick. We're going to get a curse here. But we also got Omamori, which is amazing. <laughs> with with cursed uh, key. But we need to be able to remove this curse from our deck, and we don't know how we're going to be able to do that, so it is a little dicey. Um, we have to Battle Trance. And we're not going to be able to play Clash this turn. So what's the game plan? I think you definitely want... To poison. That's okay. I think that's a that's a fair. I think we then shrug. And I think I'm okay taking four damage to hit him with cleave. It's either that or take no damage. But then you're applying some block, right? Yeah, I think hitting you is okay. Because taking four damage is really taking zero if we don't take any more over the course of the whole fight. But oh, he didn't apply block. He applied strength. Still, I don't think that changes our actions. You're gonna heal, which sucks. And I think we'll go for uh, this guy first. If we're gonna take one damage regardless, two damage, I guess. We should Reaper, I suppose. That way we get some healing out of it while still dealing some extra damage. And the poison is starting to become pretty anemic. These guys are doing nothing, though. Uh, if we armaments, then we get a clash for free. And then it's either... Well, the best thing we can do is definitely a strike clothesline on this. Because then... Uh, that's just our best damage output, and nobody's actually doing any attacks, so it's fairly easy. Please get a strength buff. No, it's a heal again. You're being so annoying, dude. So Bash Strike is not going to kill. I think you start with a Bouncing Flask and see where it lands. Wow. Um, 
Are we really going to take 20 on this turn? I'm going to roll the dice. I'm okay with it. We are going to take a lot of damage. Keep in mind, we are going to rest before the boss fight, probably. I'd, I'd prefer to upgrade a card, but this would be our first time actually resting, which is important. And you're dead. Um, I'd actually prefer, if possible, not to play Cleave. But we have to. And we might as well just play two, because you're definitely 100% dead. So we'll strike you, and we'll defend. And I'm bummed, because we're still going to lose more HP, but this, this was the first fight that really went badly for us. You're dead. And we're still probably going to come out of it looking okay. Throw in another Clash. I, I'll, I'm guilty, but I'm almost always going to go for a Clash deck. This is like a very similar fight, so we definitely open with a Battle Trance, and now we're screwed on the Clashes, unfortunately, but... Uh, so we're going to play two Defends, and then Cleave Strike. Why? Because uh, we want to minimize regret. I'm actually very concerned now about uh, how this fight's going to go because of a, a pretty inert turn one. Armaments hits almost nothing, but it does give us five block. If I clothesline you, it's going to take off four damage. That's almost as good as a block. Plus, it hits you. Um, I think I'm going to start there, but it probably is better to kill this guy faster. Can I do 17 damage to you? Yeah, yeah, I can. So I think we'll actually do it like this. Oh, I'm stupid. The Explosive Potion is not uh, 20 damage to each enemy, it's 10 damage. That's just an actual brain fart. Second floor has gone a lot slower than the first floor here. I gotta look at it like, has this floor always been this long? <laughs> it's probably not a good sign. Uh, Alright, get smacked. You, I, thanks for Gremlin Horn, which I completely forgot about. I, I think I'm just going to bash, and I'm going to strike. I'm not going to play anything else because I don't want to fill up our deck with hexes and, you know, find myself in a deleterious situation. That being said, I am going to Bouncing Flask you because I think the value we get out of that is way better. And I'm going to Clothesline you to keep you weak as long as possible. So I only need to do 20 damage to you next turn, but that's going to be admittedly fairly tough to do. Uh, never mind. So it's 7, 4, 4, 6, 17 damage. It's not going to kill you. But a bash, 6, takes you to 25, which is actually 14. And that'll deal 10. I think bash, I need to deal 14 damage. I gotcha. Starting to get real, though. Searing Blow kind of works with, uh, with Armaments Plus. I'm going to give it a chance. I normally do not. You are extremely important. So I, as much as I would love, like, Dead Branch, maybe, we got a card removal, our curse. Non-negotiable. We never know when it's going to come back again. Um... A second Reaper? I don't know. Healing an extra two per combat? Shh, doesn't seem that good, does it? I think I'm going to save my money for the chance to actually buy a Relic or, or continue to remove curses in the future. Oh, we may just die here. Dude, I didn't realize how much of a, a nerf it is. Like defend? Defend Bouncing Flask? 
didn't realize how much of a nerf it is to, to constantly uh, never know what you're about to encounter. Like, to be unable to plan your path is actually really tough. Oh, we're gonna be weak as heck. Yeah, that's bad. In fact, I would argue that we're starting to approach, like, really bad, but this is an easy turn. You armaments, you defend, and then you just bash Clash, which is our best damage output, and we are still gonna get hit for six. But this guy's dead. Next turn. It would have been nice if he chose, like, not to weaken me in advance, but so be it. <laughs> uh... Now, I think I want to... A clothesline only takes off like three damage, but it does... Oh, no, it doesn't. I think we defend, bouncing flask, cleave, clash. Which allows us to get through his armor a little bit. We are still going to take some damage, but... Ah, we should cleave first. Kills this guy, gives us gremlin horn, that's true. And then uh, also means all the poison is going to end up on this guy. Hey, a smart play. So then it would be clothesline. No, it would have to be defend. Yeah. We still take five, but he has 13 poison stacked on him now. So we got good, we got good news. Probably start with... Uh, you probably start with a shrug it off, honestly. Which you would then use a battle trance. Uh, I think this is an easy turn. You're just bouncing flask. And then heal. Or uh, defend. When you think about it, though, defending is really just healing in advance, isn't it? So if I can just defend through his attacks, we're set. And it, it looks like that's going to work. Uh, well, it, it actually looks like he's just gonna be dead, but... Second floor is taking forever here. Give me a disarm. Please, God. Oh, thank you. We'll just gain 100 gold for free. And we will rest, which is gonna take us to 71 HP. And then we'll go for our second boss fight, and I'm a little scared, but also happy to be alive. I'll tell you straight up, I love getting rid of his uh, debuffs on turn one. But I think we might prefer to bash. No, we want to do it like this. There we go, two turns of vulnerable, two turns of poison. We didn't do a whole lot of damage to him. But it's a start. Now, for you, we have to shrug it off in order to play Clash. We'll definitely disarm as well. So now we only have two energy. Uh, and I think we'll just start going on one of these guys. Might as well Searing Blow, right? We, we so rarely play it. So you took a Bouncing Flask, and you took a Clothesline. Both valuable cards. I would prefer not to lose if I were given the choice. Simple turn. Defend, defend. Uh, clash, Clash kills you, so we should strike at the other enemy, perhaps. And we get Gremlin Horn out of this. Which gave us enough energy to play Clothesline. Uh, which we'll play. Why not? So far, we're doing a, a decent job of taking care of the the riffraff. He's pretty much gotten over his uh, disarm early, unfortunately. All right, if we look at this, Armaments Plus does give us an extra card draw, but I think I'd rather upgrade some of the three cards we draw from Battle Trance. And in this case, we're going to upgrade all of them. So we'll start there. And then Searing Blow now does 16 damage. Pretty good. We still want to kill this guy first. So Cleave is not that good on this turn because it only does one extra damage to this guy. But it does do 10 damage by itself. So it's our highest damage attack. Honestly, I think we might like a, a Cleave into a Clothesline on this guy. Which will save us like another 4 damage. It's almost like getting a block out of it. And he's weak for 3 turns. Which is why I decided that was the better option.
Well, to clash, we have to shrug it off. Defend, defend. <laughs> but it's still the best option, unfortunately, in terms of just raw damage output. But anyway, this guy's going to be dead in one turn, and then we're going to start to be able to stack poison on the Guardian, but he's getting stronger as well. I think we might just be falling apart here, but... So we use the Clash, but not the Clash Plus. I definitely want to Flask you. And unfortunately, it doesn't really matter what we do with our other energy. I think we'll probably lose here, but I don't think it's a bad attempt for our first daily challenge. Like, not being able to see where we were going turned out to be a huge detriment. To be fair, Bouncing Flask, I think, turned out to be a pretty huge uh, positive. But let's not get too resigned to our fate yet. You know, we got 23 poison damage on him, that's no joke. Basically puts him on, like, probably like an 8 turn timer. Bare minimum when you factor in our damage. So he's dealing 22, which is horrible. Uh, I think you definitely want to defend, if only so you can get a clash out there. You could, you can't bash Reaper, we actually cannot do that now, so I think you just go... Probably bash, clash? And I, there was a, a case to be made maybe for Searing Blow as well, but... We're probably dead this turn. But I, I'm really, like, in contrast to a lot of recent Slay the Spire episodes, if we die here... I think I'm going to leave this one feeling pretty darn good about the way that we played. And also, I want to point out, very refreshed about the fact that there's daily challenges in the game, which have been, well, I mean, we've only done one, but the modifiers by themselves have been a lot of fun. Okay, so you're dealing 28 damage. We have to find a way to live. So, for the rare case, I'm going to use armaments to give us the raw block here. We have 29 damage, so we will now absolutely live. Um, and then we got two choices. We could Bouncing Flask, which is really good. Clash, Clash. Or we could Clothesline and do nothing. Knowing that we're gonna live, I actually... I know this will weaken him, by the way, which will take him down to, like, maybe 11 damage times 2. I think we're still gonna live, but I could be very wrong here. I'm an idiot. I actually meant to Bouncing Flask, Clash, Clash. I think I might have just cost us the run. <laughs> Never mind, I hate it! I don't hate the game. I hate, You know they say hate the player, not the game? I'm the player. I think we're still going to win, by the way. He's dead. Good lord. We've done it again. Gone and done it again, y'all. Ooh, baby, I love you, way. None of these are great. I think we're going to skip. Open this. Dude, I don't know. I'm friggin' Sneko Eye. Let's do it. I think that this run could actually work. Let's proceed. And we're, you know, it's good daily so far. I gotta be honest, I gotta go to round table. This run has gone on a little longer than expected. If we continue to live, it's gonna be a problem. But, uh, I mean, a good problem, I suppose. So, I'm gonna splice two episodes together. And I'll, I should see you shortly.